Hi everyone, Elaine Beck here with It's Not About Us, the radio show that talks about the wonderful things that are happening in our country. And we are just here today and excited about the fact that uh, God loves us and it's not about us, it's about the fact that He is the one that we allow to lead and guide us, that leads and guide us, loves us, sees us through the times of trouble. And it's a wonderful, blessed world that we live in when we look at it that way from His eyes instead of through the eyes of the world. And so today we are so blessed that we are having Alveda King and, excuse me, Dr. Alveda King on our show. Uh, she's, she's, we've decided a while back when we first met that we were sisters. And so because we're sisters, it's really hard to call her doctor, but I respect your title, ma'am. I just think I that's think wonderful. That's great, though, Elaine, because that's who we are. That's who we are. Yes, we are. We are. And uh, what a blessing it is that we can sit here and talk about the good things happening in the country. And I know that you are working very hard with an organization that's trying to help make all that possible. And, and we just met a few minutes ago and uh, prayed about that. So, Alvita, can you share with everyone? When we think about life, and you just said that, the good things that are happening in the world, in our nation, and in our lives. And at America First Policy Institute, where I am the director, no, the chairman of the Center for the American Dream, we are defining the American Dream. And I would ask all the time when I'm on the news or talking to people, you and I have conversations, mm -hmm. automatically we can kind of know that many bad things are happening in the world. Sure. But what about the good things? Mm -hmm. And even when I think about that, if we, we even think about Jesus, every time he got some bad news, he went out and did something really, really good. Yes. And I try true. to do that in my own life. If I get bad news, uh -huh. then I try to go and make a difference. Mm -hmm. And somebody says, if you get a lemon, <laughs> make <laughs> lemonade. Right. And so that philosophy, every cloud has a silver lining. And uh, if, say, even with a bottle of water, it's full of air if it looks empty, but you put water to the halfway mark, is it half full or is it half empty? Right. So we're going to fill up our lives with the good news. Well, um, I've always said about the, the glass half full, glass empty question. I said, well, it's only half full, but uh, God fills up the rest of it for me. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, it's, it's all about our perspective. Yeah. And, you know, if we read the Bible, if we turn to God, if we um, share with people that are like-minded and talk and learn about his leading and guiding, you know, we know the good news and uh, we can't we can't lose our way. Right. But if we start looking at nothing but the world, listening to nothing but the negative, um, allowing ourselves to be surrounded by worldly people, what perspective can we have? And so we need to guard our hearts, as the Bible says. Don't you think so, Alvita? I do. And we can ask God to even bless our perspective. Right. What we see, how we respond to it. Right. And my best example, I have to give this one because I think about it all the time. If you think about Abraham and Sarah. Right. And they had both become what we call old. <laughs> and so God says, you guys are going to have a baby. So Abraham looks in the mirror and everything is gravity is pulling it another direction. <laughs> Same thing with Sarah. So right. if they had stopped there and if they were stuck on that, they never could have stepped out on faith That's right. and birthed the promise, which was Isaac at the right. time. Right. And it's the same thing with me. I, uh, I'm a little bit older now and, and some, some maturity is here. And I did something recently and my kids are around me and uh, they said, we didn't know you could walk that fast. I said, just because I don't walk fast doesn't mean I can't. <laughs> so they're looking at us. They're watching us. Right. And they see us mature. Right. They want to know how we're going to handle it. Right. And we have to handle it with hope, expectation, a perspective that this may be pretty bad, but there's something else that can happen and it can get better. We have the answer. We have the better. But we, they want it. They need it. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, um, one of the things that I like to do is, you know, hopefully we all pray. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and, you know, I, I love that I finally got it at, I don't even know what age it was that I finally got it when it says, uh, pray continually because you can learn. And, and if you practice this, it, it's the most levitating feeling. You're not really levitating, but it's just that lightning feeling yeah. of no matter what happens, if, if it's something bad or good or, uh, whatever is happening in your life you know, you can pray about it as you talk to somebody. I mean, I'm praying right now about all the people out there listening and hoping that this touches their heart yeah. because in our minds, we're praying. Yes. So you can pray continually. Uh, if you find yourself in a, a bad situation, a scary situation, a, uh, a moment that is bigger than yourself, just remember, God is always bigger. If you reach out to him, he'll give you the peace beyond all understanding that he's promised all of us, no matter what the situation is. Can I share an event that happened many, many years ago? I was a student in college right. in journalism, mm -hmm. and I was assigned to go talk to a big personality, go do an interview with someone. Right. And I was able to do an interview with evangelist Billy Graham. Oh, how nice. Now, God interestingly enough, oh, he's yeah. talking because you just said, I'm praying right now. And in your heart, you can pray all the time. And oh, I know yeah. you're doing it right this minute. Oh, yeah. So he says, I said, well, evangelist Graham, what is the answer to the problems of the world? What can we do? And he said, we should pray without ceasing. Amen. So now That's I had it. a new slogan. Nobody mm -hmm. can pray 24-7. Because, you know, that new saying, it was mm -hmm. new then 24-7. And he says, uh, I'm praying for you right now. <laughs> right. Amen. At <laughs> that moment, I realized that I needed prayer right. to have him say that. Yes. So as we pray, prayer changes us. Mm -hmm. And it changes our perspective. Mm -hmm. And then God can use us to move those circumstances around. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And another thing that um, I've been talking a lot with people lately about is the fact that how few people really understand the power of the name of Jesus. I mean, years ago, I was in my early 30s. I, I was going through a struggling time. It, it, my life wasn't easy. Uh, and I, I, I started turning more and more to the Bible and I, I really didn't understand a lot. And uh, I remember God giving me this message. It was one of the first ones that I got that I really realized it had to be from him. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't hear his verbal words, right. but you hear it in your heart. Yeah. You, you know this. And he told me that I needed to say his name regularly to people that that's how I could share him. Wow. And so I went to work and I decided to try it. <laughs> and um, of course, you know, the first time we do anything is not easy because we're, we're sort of uh, trying it out. It's like, this, does this fit me? Am I comfortable? Um, and we all know, and we've seen people already in our lives sort of give you a funny look if you mention the word church or God or something. I mean, the world out there doesn't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. And so I went to work and the first few times I tried it on for size, I got several different responses. I got everything from the rolling eyes and the turn and walk away to the shocking one of, oh, thank you, I needed that. And, and then you even realize further as you do it, God tells you, even that person that walked away or rolled his eyes, someday that thought will come back to them and they'll remember when they meet someone else that speaks to their heart. So you've planted a seed if you do nothing else. And then recently I've been sharing with everybody that it's not just speaking his name. It's not just spreading his word. Yeah. It's knowing that the power yeah. that you attain by speaking. I mean, I just can't say that strongly enough. When I mention God, I've seen my life grow. I've seen God um, grow me and put things in my way that I never would have expected. And I know now it's because I listened to him yeah. and I spoke his name 
And I learned to say it regular. And I learned to say to people when they said they weren't feeling good, let me pray for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Alvita, I know you live, we've talked about this. We live this mirrored way of life with people. And what a blessing it puts on our lives because we all know that the Bible says that to give is to receive. My most blessed relationships, you just described those. Mm -hmm. And even as we prepare to begin to record today, right. we just spontaneously reached our hands out together and we began to pray. Right. And we called on the name of Jesus. And while you were talking, you're already a very beautiful person. And oh, I know people you. say that all the time, but you became more beautiful as you talked and called Jesus. Yes. And when you would say Jesus, your face just lights up. And as we do that, people do see it. And it's like a mirror. And they see Christ when they look at us. And prayerfully, it reflects back. Right, and right. I think it actually does. Because I was just watching you there just begin to glow and light up, just saying the name of Jesus. That's the word. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. um, in the Bible, it talks about how when Moses went up on the mountain mm -hmm. and he glowed so much that they couldn't even handle it. Cover your face. Cover you know, your face. You know, so. Yeah. Of course we glow when we yeah. think about him, when Absolutely. we talk about him, when we share him, especially. Mm -hmm. And um, so now we're going to take a break okay. and um, we, we need to do that. And I'm just so thankful, though, that you're here. And I want everybody to know that they can reach out and um, talk to us by uh, going on It's Not About Us 2022 at gmail.com and leave us comments and thoughts. And we even accept prayers on there. And we would love to hear from everyone. So we will be right back. Welcome back, everyone. What a great day we are having here. I just love it. Uh, this show has turned out to be one of the best things that ever happened to me in my life, literally. And spending time with all the listeners and knowing that, you know, we're sharing what God is putting in our lives right now, the good news about what's happening in the country on its uh, Not About Us. And we're doing it through uh, talking to people that love God and share God and love our country. And again, I'm going to introduce you again to Alveda King, Dr. Alveda King. Um, and as my friend, I call her Alveda. And uh, we are so happy to have her here. Tell us a little bit more about the organization that you're working with. Say again, how maybe how they can look up the company. And then uh, let's talk about what this organization is trying to do. I am with America First Policy Institute. I didn't say America only, <laughs> just America first. And you yeah. can find that AFPI, America First Policy Institute. And so if you kind of Google it and find us, and I am the chairman of the Center for the American Dream. Wonderful. And the perspective that I have is America first, and that's Americans first. Right. Human dignity first, Amen. from the womb to the tomb, the baby in the womb and born and grows up and finally becomes mature and even elderly. But that should be a flourishing life all the way through. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to me, the name of your show is not about me. It's all about us. So the actual it's, it's it's say it again. It's not. It's about not us. about us. Right. It's not about me. If it's not about us, it's not about me. Right. It's about you. It's about other people. It's about everybody. So when it's no longer just about me, because that's one thing that people will do. They'll say, I don't care about your problems. I don't care about what's happening to you. Right. I want to care about what's happening to me. Right. When we can come outside of ourselves, it's not about us but it's about you. You know, the Good Samaritan, and so many people walked by the Good Samaritan because they were so busy right. that they couldn't stop to think about the Good Samaritan saying, hey, wait a minute, it's not about me and what I have to do. It's about this person if I don't. And then what will happen to me if I don't stop and care enough about the person, what's gonna happen to my soul? Mm -hmm. So when we help others, when we serve others, when we care about others, then that is when we really come alive, in That's my right. opinion. That's oh, my perspective. I agree. Well, 
the Bible shares that. I mean, you just, you know, talked about the Good Samaritan. I mean, we're, we're told these things in the Bible. It's it, everything's there. All answers are there. Are they not? You know, and the thing is, is, you know, I've seen it in my own life. And, you know, in the Bible, it says that um, if you, if you give so much as a glass of water in his name, you will reap the rewards. That's right. And I see this happening all the time. It also says, though, that if you don't help a stranger and you go by, that be wary because that could have been an angel. In disguise. In disguise. And when we pass them by... Jesus would say, so you you forsook me. You didn't care about me. Well, That's when right. did I forsake you? Well, you didn't take care of the widow, the orphan, didn't visit those in jail. That's right. You did not take care of me. That's right. We don't always see it that way. And nope. even the analogy just given, given the prophet a cup of water in the name of the prophet. But right. It, but you have to give the water. Right. You have to open that hand and give. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. And, and I love it because... You know, there's so many other stories in the Bible and um, that share that it's not how much you give, you know, and it, it's not about um, never thinking of yourself. But, you know, just like in a good relationship, you don't have to think about yourself because in a relationship, the other person's so busy giving to you. And you know who I think of in that? Who? Jesus. Amen. He was so busy. He's so busy giving to us and helping us Mm -hmm. and doing for us that he came here and became a servant rather than rather than to expect anybody to bow down to him or to, you know, take care of him. He gave. Well, if he can do that, who are we? To say, well, this is about me, and I, I don't care what other people think. And you hear this all the time I in feel, our world now. I want oh. people to do that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? It's That isn't the way that, that we're supposed to be. Right. It really isn't. We're supposed to be thinking about what it is that um, is important to the other person. And do you know how we receive then? We see receive that great feeling of knowing we helped somebody, Mm -hmm. we did some, we said something nice. If all you can do is say something nice. I, you know, I was in housekeeping for years. Okay. And I was a housekeeping supervisor. Okay. And I used to tell my staff, I don't care. It was in a a hospital. I'd say, if you see somebody walking towards you down the hall and you're pushing your housekeeping cart, and you just hang your head, that's the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at them and I want you to smile at them Mm -hmm. because they may be there to see somebody who's sick or dying or it may be them that's suffering. And you just give them a smile. It may be the only smile they see that day. How important is that? Just that alone. How encouraging is it for somebody to look at a face that has got a full-blown smile on it, it lifts the spirit. And we stop, we practice, we engage with eye contact. Amen. And what we're really saying is, I see you. That's right. You matter. Exactly. And when we say that to someone else, it it really might make a day for them. Right, right. We know so many things that God has given me to do, and, and when you do them, of course, when you first start, just like when I was sharing the story about first mentioning his name. Mentioning the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. When you first start it, you're like, this is going to look funny. Yeah. What will people think? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then it takes the first time for somebody to say, thank you. I needed, I needed that. that. Thank you. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. It just, it all it's all, it all worth even the, the ugly looks or the rolled yeah, eyes. Yeah. You don't care about that no. because you know that God is telling you you're doing the right thing. We all need that reassurance Absolutely. in whatever we do. It does. So I think it's great what you're doing. And I know that you feel reassured every day about the work that's happening at AFPI. 
We pray at AFBI. We Amen. pray together. We pray for others. And then others pray for us. Yes. And we come together and I meet wonderful people like you. And I hear the same message that's in my heart and it's reflected back. And it strengthens me to do more. And then as we learn that, that we need each other. And when we share with each other, then God and Jesus and Holy Spirit come alive in us. That mm -hmm. is so true. And, you know, um, we're going to have to go to break again. But um, I'm just loving this conversation. And I've missed seeing you. It's always nice to see the face of the per people that you care about. But we will be back. And I just want everybody to remember that you can also go to Proverbs Media uh, group dot com and you can go down the page until you come to listen now and then you'll know um, that uh, you, you can see all of our shows you can see what we're doing and we will be right back hi everyone elaine back and i am back again here in Phoenix, Arizona on 960 uh, The Patriot. And uh, we are so happy that we're here and we can bring this show to you. It's such a joy to share with people that we know have like-minded feelings about this country that loves God, loves the country, and wants to see the good things happen. And each week we try and bring to you people that will uh, lighten your load a little bit. We've been through so much with COVID and all the things. So now it's nice just to hear good news. And so today we are here with Alveda King, Dr. Alveda King, and we're just so happy to have her. And I've asked her that in this segment to share a little bit about her life. She's got such a wonderful background. I'm sure it's going to go over into the next segment, but this is very important. So Alveda, Tell everybody about the, a little bit of your history. I was so excited to do the show. It's not about us. And I want to talk about how one day I found out it's not about me mm. or just about me. And I went through some periods where I was really sad and down. Sure, I am no. the uh, niece of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and my granddaddy, Daddy King Sr., my daddy, Reverend A.D. King. So if you explore uh, my story, you'll find out that uh, we had the assassination of my uncle, the death of my daddy related wow. to the movement and all those things. Right. I also had abortions in my younger life right. and all of that. And there was a period that I just wanted to talk about how sad and what had happened to me and sure. how angry I was. Yes. And then I began to find out that there were others mm. who had experienced even more Millions. And they were able to still find some joy and some help. My grandfather, before he passed away, Reverend Martin Luther King right. Sr., right. he said, I used to cry because I had no shoes oh. until I found a man who had no feet. Oh, amen. Now think about it. Yeah, amen. And I began to change that perspective. Mm -hmm. And I began to find out that other people were going through something as well. And then I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. And I had a turnaround. And then I discovered that I could share with others the goodness of the Lord. Amen. So as I say, I've been divorced in my lifetime. I've had abortions. I've repented for them. Absolutely. And God has forgiven me. And I had anger and rage. Mm -hmm. I was so angry at some of the things that had happened to me. Right. And I had to learn from my parents even my mother, who's still living, to forgive. That's the hardest thing for me, is forgiving. Mm -hmm. And then recently, the Lord showed me, uh, somebody asked me, could I forgive someone who had done something wrong to me? Right. And I thought that person owed me an apology. It was about <laughs> me. If they don't apologize to me, I'm not apologizing to them. But I went on, it, it laid honestly, I stayed up all night Googling. How do you apologize to somebody who owes you an apology? I'm Googling <laughs> and checking. It's I love seriously, it. four o'clock in the morning, I'm exhausted. Okay. Those, and I say, Holy Spirit, how can you forgive somebody who owes you an apology? <laughs> and it's almost, Holy Spirit kind of did what you did, chuckle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was almost like, I was wondering if you'd ask me. <laughs> and so Holy Spirit said, you could have been kinder. 
Mm-hmm. You know, the Bible says, be ye kind right. one to another. Right. And I wrote a letter to the person and said, in spite of everything that's happened, I'm so sorry. I could have been kinder. It opened all kind of doors. Amen. And I published I it in a blog that. and people read it and said, wow, I could too. Yes. So yes. all the things that I've been forgiven for, and there are many, mm-hmm. as I forgive and confess, it grows. Yes. And so yeah. that is that really did happen. Well, you know, that's a beautiful story. And um, I think that, you know, people need to understand, too, that there were millions of women and people that were lied to yeah. uh, in this yeah. country. Yes. And we're told that, you know, that wasn't a baby. That was just a blob of, blob of tissue and stuff. And, and you know, people are, are pushed in a corner or, or put in, in a bad position. You know, obviously, we're human beings. It's easier to take the easy way out, yes. isn't it? You'll you know? believe it. If- and, and so if somebody tells you a lie and that takes the pressure off of you, well, you're going to go the easy route. Right. But you know what? We have the most wonderful, as you shared, loving, forgiving God. Those are the sins he died on that cross for. He did. And then he says in his word again, it's all about repenting. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go back to break again. That that was beautiful. I I love segments like this because, you know, there's women out there that needed to hear that right now. And I just know it. I just feel the Lord touching them, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and giving them strength. And so thank you for that, that story. But, um, we're going to go to break and, uh, I want to remind the listeners that, you know, sometimes we have these jovial, fun, crazy speakers and stuff, and that's fun. But this is wonderful today to talk to somebody and Speak our hearts about the Lord and Savior we love so much. So we will be back in just a few moments with Alveda King one more time. Hi, everyone. Elaine back, and we're back again with It's Not About Us. And we are just so glad that you can join us and uh, just know that you can reach out to us anytime that you want to on It's Not About Us 2022 at gmail.com. Again, you know, we like to hear from you. We want to know what about our show you like? Uh, Are there any speakers or anybody in particular that you'd like to hear from? Uh, We're always happy to um, serve here on our on our show. So uh, today we have uh, Dr. Alveda King and uh, it's it, we're just having this wonderful uh, woman to woman conversation. And you know what? It's good that the men are here listening too because you know, sometimes uh, it's it, we're, we're different, you know, the old, uh, what is it, Venus and Mars, or there's a couple, couple planets, yes, or whatever, you know. But the truth of the matter is, is uh, we've had some wonderful men in our lives too. And those men have been um, our knights in shining armor. And uh, we've learned a lot from them, have we not? We absolutely have. And I've learned from my father, my grandfather, <clears throat> there's some mentors and my pastor, Reverend Alec McNair and his wife, Anna McNair and Pastor McNair. Uh, one thing he taught me, and I do want to share this one publicly because I was ordained through our ministry right. and he was training us in homiletics and how to speak. Then he would give us the microphone to do many sermons. Okay. He would give an exact amount of time if we went over time and we stood up before the congregation and delivered these. Right. If you went over time, he'd look at the audio and cut the mic oh. in the middle of your sentence. Oh, no. So I had to learn to deliver those messages and trust the Holy Ghost. Right. And learn how to get those answers out and get them out well. And I wanted to be angry. Why would you cut off the mic? The Holy Ghost was speaking. <laughs> So I learned some type of uh, opportunity. It was an opportunity to learn how to use the time that was allotted to me and get those answers out. And guess what? All those years later, 
Fox News hired me. And you right. know, on the news, you only get two minutes, three minutes or whatever. Right, right. And if you've not finished, they'll just go to break. <laughs> so I learned that from my mentor, Alan McNair. That is an amazing story. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't only, only just learn about God at church, do we? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And we would get that too. So yeah. it was amazing. And, and you know, that's a really great subject for us. Yeah. Um, when we look back at our history of our country, uh, the Bible was taught in school. Yes, and uh, it was very important that when the pastor got up on Sunday, that he shared what was happening in the community. That's right. In school. Yeah. Uh, in uh, our state. Uh, if there was any government news that had come in that week, we would hear it. Yeah. And and they would stand there and they would talk about the right and wrong in all ways. Yes. And it wasn't just about inside your heart and stuff. Right. Because we don't just answer to ourselves. We answer to God, to God. and all the people around us, our families. Our families, our communities. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And it's not the way that it's been for many years. And I'm so happy to see all these pastors standing up behind that pulpit, speaking the real truth They're again, aren't you? They're getting that courage back. They're beginning to speak. I want to say something else, though, because I don't know how much time we have. And I've been observing you today. And you're very gracious and lovely. And I'm observing your outfit. Oh, thank so you. I want to speak to young ladies right now. I want to give this example. Please do. I really do. I was talking to a young lady the other day and uh, she was saying, well, I know how to look sexy. I said, well, what does that mean? Uh, and, well, you show so much skin and all of this. Now, I said that was an actress, Audrey Hepburn. Right. Who was very classy and elegant, but uh, she was very attractive and everybody knew it. So I was thinking about your outfit today. And it shows just the appropriate amount of femininity, but it's still lovely and gracious. <laughs> so this young lady came through one day and her skirt was so short and she was trying to show everything. I said, honey, just, just uh, go on Google and look up Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> and she actually did. So the next time I saw her, she had on a dress uh, that was longer. Uh huh. And it, and it showed just the femininity, femininity and the graciousness and the beauty. I said, I thought about Kenneth Hagin, and I don't know if your viewers have heard he was a preacher. Right. And right. he said, there's nothing wrong with putting a little paint on the barn. Uh huh. So he didn't mind a little lipstick and a little pretty hair and all of that. But whether we want to look this way or we want to look that way, as Christian women, we can be very beautiful very attractive, mm -hmm. but uh, people don't need to be confused about what message we're trying to deliver. Exactly. So that's what I want to say to some of the young girls. Oh, You know, and we our fingernails should look pretty. Our hair should look pretty. Uh, we should have on a little paint on the barn. That's the lipstick right, or right, whatever. Right. But we don't want that to be the only thing we are concerned about. It's what's inside of our hearts that we want people to see as well. Amen. And I see, I'm I serious, that. when I see you today, I see all of that together, and it gives such a beautiful look. And if uh, some of the guys were up here, we would want them to have on their nice suits or their nice ties Amen. or their blue yeah. jeans or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. But we want people to see past all that pretty stuff and see Jesus. Amen. Yeah. This is so true. You know, you have just hit on my favorite subject lately. You can ask my friend, Francie. Okay. Uh, I go to all these events and I love it. I just feel so honored to meet all these people and to see all these lovely women and mm -hmm. their handsome the uh, guys and stuff, you yeah. know, and, and it's, it's, it's a great thing. But then we've got, you know, a What's few of them, because What's it's not inside? just little kids, yeah. that, young kids yeah. that do this. Yeah. We've got some older women and stuff, too, that think that, you know, sharing everything. Put everything out there. There's nothing left to the imagination. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm going to tell you a story. And, and this this, this is, uh, I, I can't tell you who it was, because I'd get myself in trouble. Okay, so so we're, we're not going to tell who it was. <laughs> But I know a young woman, a young couple mm -hmm. that was out one evening with another young couple. They were related even. Yeah. They were all going out and having a good time. Yeah. 
and they got about halfway through the evening and the gentleman excused themselves to go do something. I don't know if they were going to get another drink or yeah. restroom, what it was. And the one relative looked at the other one and she said, you know what, sweetie, I really love you. And I just think you're one of my favorite people. But if you don't put those girls away, mm -hmm. when my husband and I are out with you, we're not and going with you anymore. And the girls under here. That's right, we know right, girls right, are. right. Mm -hmm. She said, if you don't put those girls away, she said, because I'll tell you what, I'm a woman and I can't stop staring at them. Mm -hmm. So if I can't, I know my husband oh, can't and I don't appreciate it. I just thought that was so, such a great way. I do. Doing that. And I what's do. the objective? I'd say, what's the objective when you dress and go out? You want to look attractive. You want to be pretty. Right. You want to represent Christ. Amen. So that should be about all that you want to represent. You That's know? right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Because it is true. If only everyone would really understand that it's truly what's inside of you. Yeah. Yeah. It is how you, what was the word? I'm tr There's a great word for this, comport yourself. That is it, yes. Okay? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's how people look at you and see you on the inside. You how you package talk. package together, it's attractive, you're speaking. Do you, do you yeah. walk, yeah. you know, the right way? Mm -hmm. Do you present yourself the right? And I always say my mother did me the greatest favor because my mother had five daughters wow and she taught us all yeah you are to dress like a lady act like a lady talk like a lady walk like a lady mm -hmm. and only then will you be a lady i love it and you earn the respect i love it that you get yes and that's what i want people to understand mm -hmm. there's a way to earn respect and Showing everything you've got ain't going to do it. No. Nope. So and I God love will look, you the, the that guy look at it, but that's not what he's looking for. No, no, no. And, um, you know, there's enough temptation in this world without making ourselves too temptating for, for other yeah, people. It's yeah. not fair. Yeah, it's you know, not, it's not. We're, not, we're not helping ourselves or anybody else around us. So, mm -hmm. but I love that you brought that subject up. You really, you hit the nail on the head for well, me. Thank you. Thanks, because. Man. You know, it's sad that in this world uh, right now that people are looking for attention and uh, there are ways of getting attention that are good and healthy and wonderful and to make you feel good about yourself. You don't have to stoop to that level. You just really don't. No, you don't. So, so thanks for that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, tell us a little bit more about the men in your life because we all know that uh, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was uh, your uncle. Who's my uncle, my daddy, Reverend Alfred Daniel Williams King. Yes. Who yes. lost his life in the civil rights movement the year after. My grandfather, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Sr. saved me from abortion. In 1950, my mom was pregnant and granddaddy said he had seen me in a dream three years before. Wow. And he described me and my mother agreed with him and she and dad were married <laughs> and had five of us. And I've been married and divorced. Right. And uh, and those were for reasons. I think it was because more so I was broken and shattered right. from too many tragedies in my life. Right. And so God, of course, has healed me. I have four sons, two daughters, seven grandsons and four granddaughters. Awesome. And so the young men in my life right now are my sons and grandsons. Right. And I'm enjoying that. I have my mentors who are women and men. Right, right. And uh, so all of that is just fabulous. So I've been married and now at 71 years of age. Right, People say, right. well, why do you say your age? Because I want to live a long time and be happy and healthy. Right, right. And so I'm not ashamed or afraid for each year that comes. I consider right, each year right. a blessing. So they say, will you ever marry again? I said, well, I'm not looking to, but if it happened and God said do it, maybe so. Right, right. And so that's kind of where I am today. Well, I think it's funny because this is where you and I had that conversation a while back and we agreed that we were in the same boat because I said to you, if you recall, I said, well, I can beat you on that one because I'm 74. I remember. And, and really, I, neither of us really actually look our age. No, I know that. No, I and, do know that. And, and 
but it's what's in our heart that people see. You know, we present who we are. We were just talking about this. And this clarifies it even further. You know, if you have a strong heart for the Lord and you've got the armor of God on, you know, you are ready for whatever challenge the world offers you. And you are young at heart. Okay. And God bless these women that um, have health issues and stuff that don't allow them to be as productive as you or I, but, but, but you know what? I know some of them that are even unable to get out as much as we do, but they still have such a great way of showing that the, the way that God is using them and still giving them all kinds of purpose in their life. You know, some of those people, my mother, um, passed away two years ago. And uh, even when she was in a nursing home and couldn't do hardly anything, she still meant a lot to me. She still touched my heart every time I saw her or whether I was there or not. So she had a purpose, you know? And every woman, every man, every child has a purpose. That's right. We are all valuable. And we are precious in the sight of God. Well, Levita, we're about out of time. I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity. I have looked forward to this for so long. Thank you, dear. Thank Thank you. you. And uh, so we're going to um, close the show here in uh, just a a few uh, seconds and let everybody know that uh, we are here every week at 1 p.m. on Saturday on 960 The Patriot out of Phoenix, Arizona. And again, you can still, uh, even though we're out of Phoenix, you can go to proverbsmediagroup.com, which is our main company. And you can go on our site, scroll down the page to where it says, listen now. And when you hit that, you'll go to a page that takes you to our um our shows page and I'll have all the shows and you can look at them and listen to them. And remember, we love you. We're praying for you and we will be back here next week.